Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM News with me, Mopisa Sibidi. In our first story, two children have been recounting how a herdsman allegedly butchered their 15-year-old brother in front of them at Jiaso, a small farming village in the Asante Achim North Municipality of the Ashanti region. The unidentified cattle herder, according to the children, accosted them at a water source and inflicted machete wounds on the boy, killing him instantly. The villagers searched the area minutes later and arrested three headsmen and handed them over to the Agogo police. The indigents are calling for government's intervention to prevent a resurgence of an age-old conflict between the community and herdsmen. Live from Zarastas Osaridonko was in the community and now reports. In Shiaso is a farming community with a long history of herdsmen cattle invasion of farms. But Monday's butchering of 15-year-old David Anaria has shocked the entire community. What was supposed to be a daily chore of fetching water with their elderly sibling turned bloody. So this is the water source for both the grazing cattle for the Fulani herdsmen and farmers who farm around this area. Now this is where the crime was allegedly committed. I have here the two children who have come back to the scene uh, to pick their footwear and they're going to tell us what actually happened. No, it's so he's showing me where the uh, herdsman was seated and he points to that tree over there. So at the point where he was about to, you know, carry the gallon of water which is still lying here, he said that the herdsman got up from his seat from there again and came back here. This time he drew uh, his machete and came towards him. At this point, his brother was begging him to forgive him if he has done anything wrong. At this point, the herdsman was butchering the boy and he says that he was shouting that people should come and rescue him. So he tells me that they run, and at a point in time, he told his brother that they should part ways so that they would not be caught. And so he took another ten, and the brother took another ten. He went home to tell his people. Their father, Anaria, is distraught. The way I've suffered to raise this boy, he was supposed to write his final exams next year. The law should deal with these Fulani people. The killing is raising fears of the return of herdsmen to the area. In fact, uh, not here alone, panic. Panic, because you, you see, all people, all, 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 all the people here, we, we are all farmers. Here. This time we, we, we are gathering our, our crops and they will come destroying them. Destroying them, even if you, you tell Abuchi, don't, don't do all. Oh, what, what is this? And, and then if we don't calm down, trouble. So we fear even today to, to, to go to the farm. We don't know whether they have been hiding over there. School has reopened, but who will send his child to come? How do you know if the child will come back safely? We were expecting the police and military to be here today to offer protection and to drive these people away so we can go back to our normal duties. Police have since been visiting communities, urging calm. Inspector Bodhi was seen addressing the community.
please we urge you to send your grievances to the police don't take the law into your own hands meanwhile three suspects arrested in connection with a killing are receiving treatment at the agogo hospital after a near lynching incident reporting for joy news erastus asaredonko and shayeso asantiachem north Ashanti region. Let's stay in the Ashanti region because a study by the Department of Chemistry, Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, has revealed as high as 50% increase in the concentration of metals such as zinc and iron in some mechanically mulled fufu samples. Though from the research from estimated daily intake of metals such as zinc and iron was lower than the international food standards. There were an overindulgence in fufu may result in accumulation of these metals in the body, which though are essential may result in unwanted effects with prolonged exposure. Joy News Medical Reporter Dr. Netta Pasram reports. <laughs> One, at the same time, because we are now. One man, you one, who the two, Fufu is a popular traditional delicacy for most Ghanaians, especially amongst the Ashanti. It is prepared from boiled cassava alone or in combination with plantain or cocoa through pounding in a mortar with a pistol. The process of making fufu can be laborious, hence, in the spirit of technological evolution, some commercial fufu joints have opted for a faster and easier method, namely, mechanically milled fufu. <laughs> I was here, but for the car, 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 a heavy metal is any metallic substance that is poisonous at low concentrations. It can either be inherently essential or toxic. Examples include iron, zinc, lead, chromium, arsenic, and mercury. A buildup of these heavy metals in the body is associated with brain, heart, and kidney damage, among others. The research published in the International Journal of Food Contamination explored the concentrations of heavy metals in mechanically milled fufu and its potential health risk to consumers. Miss Patricia Ivy Agozo, a graduate student of the department, partook in the research. And generally, these machines are made from steel. And due to the possibility of these components leaching into the food process, and also the ability of these metals to store in our human organs, resulting in several health problems, are my reason for conducting this research. And also, I we sought to like determine the level of consumers' awareness on the potential contamination of fufu from these sources. Yes. A total of 30 milled fufu and unmilled fufu ingredients were sampled from five communities around KNUST campus in the Ashanti region. The results after laboratory analysis showed that chromium, nickel and manganese were well below the detection limit. However, there was about 50 and 58 percent increase in iron and zinc concentrations respectively after milling. And from my results, I realized that iron and zinc concentration had increased after milling. 
So with this increase after milling, it's an indication that this locally fabricated mill have added some amounts of this metal as a result of friction, wear and tear of the grinding part. Although right now the concentrations were below, I believe that with time, as these same machines are being used, they could be or they could present at higher levels. Also, I also recommend regular monitoring. When it comes to food safety, there is a need to continue assessing these levels. This is an indication that mechanically milled fufu is safe for consumption within the study area. However, it is important to be cautious of overindulgence. I am Dr. Netta Pashram, reporting for Joy News. In the northern region, school pupils of Uni Primary are back in school after staying at home for four years. The pupils had stopped going to school after a rainstorm pulled off the roof of the school. It became a insensitive for the pupils who had to sit under the sun to study, forcing most parents to withdraw their wards from the school. School authorities were compelled to close down the school. Correspondent Martina Bugri has the latest. Heavy rainstorm four years ago ripped off the roofing of the school. This forced school authorities to conduct lessons under trees in the school. But this could last only from 7 to 9 a.m. This compelled several parents to redraw their wall, forcing the school to be shut down. Well, today the situation has been addressed after the Member of Parliament for the area, Dr. Hamza Adam, re-roofed and renovated the entire structure. The school entire roof was ripped off by a windstorm and the community and the enclave had been out of school for the entire period. I took it upon myself to make it as one of my priority projects that will bring education to the doorstep of the people. And so for that matter, I give out the school to a contract. And I must say that I am happy to rejoice with the people today because the school has been fully renovated and as you can all see, a quality product I mean, delivered by the contractor. The newly posted head teacher Ibrahim Abdul Fatal said he had to go around the community to get the people to report because the community did not know schools were reopening today. I came here as early as 7 a.m. and when I came there wasn't any people around. I saw two, two of them around the community, so I went to listen and then asked them why they are not in school. They said they are not aware that school is uh, reopening today. So they asked, are you our teacher? I said, yes. hey, come and see the excitement from their faces. So they quickly ran into the community and called the others to come. The district planning officer of the Ghana Education Service, Elizabeth Na, praised the MP for prioritizing education and assured that teachers will be posted to the school. We as a directorate, we have come to realize that education, or for that matter, quality education, is key to the Honorable MP for the district. Since the past years, he's shown us that by building and renovating school buildings, not only that, giving us furniture. And one of such is what we are witnessing today. The MP also commissioned a renovated health center at a cost of 60,000 Ghana cities at Guilin. He charged the nurses to continue to serve the people diligently. The health center had been in a deplorable state for many years. And many attempts to renovate this building um, couldn't happen. So when I took over as a member of parliament, and as you can say, we have been able to commit an amount of about 60,000 to get the building shipped. The district health director, Seydou Barkiso, said the clinic was in a deplorable state until the MP came to their aid. After several attempts renovated, it failed. She appealed for support, especially for accommodation for the Singer community, which is the Singer Health Center, which is seven, six hard-to-reach communities in the Kumbungu district.
And the biggest issue to me on my desk right now is a sana, which is a hard to reach area. You need to cross the white volta to access the the communities in sana. And um, they don't they actually don't have accommodation, but the community is putting up something. And just like Oliver Twist, we will ask for more and if something can be done about it. In our last story, a development enthusiast has devoted a portion of his savings working in the diaspora to help develop his home community, Central Kofi Baruna, in the Guan district of the Oti region. According to Simon, he saved $40 US dollars daily for 23 years during his stay in the United States of America working in the hospitality industry. He has since begun initiating development projects, starting with the construction of a concrete road. There's more in the following report by Fred Kwame Asari. Santro Kofi Brenua is the community that welcomes you to the OT region driving through Hohwe. Indigenous of this underdeveloped community are mostly peasant farmers. They are plagued with bad access roads, a lack of potable water, and a befitting health center. This gave reason to Simon Amauga's decision to commit a portion of his earnings to the development of the community. He has since constructed a concrete access route to connect the Bachana suburb of the community to the Hohwe Jasekine Highway. So when I got to America, I decided to save towards purposely for this project. But for the first few years, I was not able to, I mean, to save. So after some five years, I came back to my senses and start making up the money. Like I was trying to save like one dollar a day. But after the first five years, I missed a target. So I, I had to make it up to $40 a day. So in 22 years, I was able to save money about $368,000. And then I, I was sure I can be able to uh, fulfill my, my, my promise. Um, I really want a legacy for the village. Building a house for myself is not a good thing to me. It's just for me alone. But whatever I can do to help the community, that's the most important to me. That was one of the most uh, important reasons why I did this. Residents are currently experiencing a lack of access to potable water as the only water system serving the community has broken down. I'm thinking of the, the school, the school buildings, the classroom, and most of all is the water. I want to get the water to the village. By uh, 2022, December, I should be able to build something that will sustain, I mean, solve the, the community water problem once and for all. That's my next project. The assembly member for Sandro Kofi Brenua Electoral Area, Nana Opoku Minta, lauded the efforts of Mr. Meuga. At least this road was first constructed up to the school compound by the elder brother, known as Mejigbe uh, Ameu. So this road later became a very deplorable road that no car can even pass on. So it was a very welcoming news to the community to hear that he was coming to construct it. And lo, lo and behold, he came down, sent people to come and construct the road. And they started it, and he has done it. And it's not something the community is very proud of. The traditional authorities acknowledged Mr. Meuga's commitment to enhance the livelihoods of residents and honored him. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Santru Kofi, Brenia. And that's how we end the AM News. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Mapita Sibidi. The AM Show continues with Benjamin.